Today's video isn't really metalworking. I guess it is kind of metalworking related. Since I'm going to go through all the gears and belt changes on my little Atlas lathe and record the RPM of each one of those settings. I actually did this a while back, but I can't find the piece of paper that I wrote it all down on. I thought, well, this time I'll bring you along because I'm going to use my homemade tachometer. But first, I have a question for you. Want to take any guesses as to what my major was in college? So why don't you pause the video, and down in the comments, put what you think my major was in college. Need a hint? Here, I'll give you a couple hints. And by a couple, I mean 19. Eh, this first one's pretty much a dead giveaway. If that one doesn't give it away, that one will give it away. But, just in case you need some more hints, My major was computer information systems. Well, I'm putting my major to good use, aren't I? So, let me show you my tachometer here real quick, then we'll go measure all the speeds of the Atlas. I'm trying to get in a position where I can show you all this, but it's just not working. So, real quick handheld overview here. Uh, I use an old laptop. It's a 480, oh no, don't shut off. 486, uh, 50 megahertz DX. So the program is here, it's something I wrote, according to this, I started on it on 26 November of 2004, which happened to be the day after Turkey Day. Um, when I originally made this, I was trying to build a wind indicator, and I was using the Hall Effect switch from an old floppy disk drive. This sets up the printer port, that way we can read pin 10, that's really all we care about in this, pin 10 is the acknowledge line. Uh, that's basically what returns you information from the printer, acknowledges you have a printer, that kind of stuff. It's input instead of output on the printer. Um, so yeah, blah blah blah, go through all this stuff. And then here's our main loop, starting here. I uh, got the Parallel port is what we're using. A couple jumper leads go out to a bicycle odometer thing. Uh, the reason I ended up using this is due to switch bounce. That's a short version. And then it comes out to a read switch. Got a little magnet here stuck to the desk. And when it goes across the magnet, it makes it work. Just, uh, Hit control F9 here. It's running. It says waiting. And if I take the sensor and run it across the magnet, it immediately goes into action. It tells me the beginning time and end time of each revolution. It tells me how long that revolution took. It tells me the RPM. It tells me the mile per hour, which is not relevant to us. That is based on a specific diameter. Like I said, I was writing this program for a wind indicator. And the revs here keeps track of how many times that thing has gone across the magnet. How many times has it actually revolved. And a lot of this information comes out of this book right here. This is a really good book. However, it seems like with the advent of Arduino, hacking an old computer to run stuff like stepper motors and whatnot just really doesn't pay off anymore. But... Yeah, if you want to use old computers to control your world, this book right here is amazing. Over here at the Atlas 10D, and I find the easiest way to mount the read switch is to put it on my indicator stand. So I stuck this little magnet here. It's a cute little thing on the chuck here and then we'll rearrange the holder to go close to the magnet there just like that 
and go to the correct directory and then we'll run if I can type the program and it's waiting for an input I have the lathe in low on the first dry belt and second dry belt that's where we're going to start it's hanging out right at 130 rpm I'm going to kick this belt over to the next gear. And just a reminder, this is an Atlas 10D. So if your lathe happens to be an Atlas 10D, this might be the gears for you too. And it's hanging around right around 227 RPM. It's not very consistent RPM. Oh, there it is. Now it's evening out. Yep. Yeah. Now it's hanging out within half an RPM of 227, if you can see that. This takes a little while to smooth out, I guess. Up another gear. Let's see. I need to write that. I did write that down. Okay. And that is bouncing around 360 RPM. This will be fourth. And that is bouncing around, boy, that's all over the chart right now. We'll call that 615, I guess. I'll change this belt up here. Okay, so I'm now in high and first. That's about 470 RPM. So, high and second. I'm going to call it 814. Okay, let's jump up to high and third. It's right at 1,290. So let's go up to high and fourth. Two thousand one hundred and seventy, there about. Now it's two thousand one hundred and eighty. I need a uh, part of the program that tells me the high point or an average or something too. You know it. Yeah, I'm going to go with 2,190 on that. You can hear the machine kind of warming up a little bit. It's kind of getting in its groove. And the RPM is settling down a lot more. So I guess that confirms that spindle warm-up is definitely an issue. It's amazing how more... Uh, uniform that RPM count is once that spindle warms up started sitting in there nice. Yeah, now that's warmed up I'm seeing uh, 2200 a lot of times coming across there. Cool. So, lesson learned from there is spindle warm up at your higher speeds is definitely important. Eh, just an interesting point. Put 5,129 revolutions on the lathe in that short little test. I'm going to put the gears, speeds, revolutions, whatever you call it, down in the description below. And I'm going to go ahead and do the back gears off camera and add that to the list too. Thanks for watching.